Hello and welcome back. This time we're going to talk about one possible uh, thing, how a computer could work. Yeah? I said only one possible. Yeah? Next time we hear another possible thing, how a computer in principle could work. Yeah? Because it's not the only way how we can imagine that computers work. However, it's the most important way. Yeah? Since most of our nowadays computers are based on this system with modifications, okay, but the core was always this system. I'm talking about a computer architecture uh, which is called the von Neumann, von Neumann architecture. It was thought by John von Neumann. Actually, that was his name after he emigrated to the US. Uh, he was born actually in, in Austria-Hungary, in, in Budapest, as, as Janusz Lajos Neumann. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, then get to the US and said he's the John Neumann and got really, really uh, high profession in computer scientists. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the von Neumann architecture. What is the von Neumann architecture? The von Neumann architecture is a computer working principle, yeah, a referential model for computers, yeah, which uh, only looks how computers may theoretically work. Yeah. Not the technical realization, but how they are theoretically working. Yeah. It was invented in 1945 by this John Neumann. Yeah. The von Neumann architecture, it's a single data, single instruction uh, model. Uh, and yeah, the revolutionary idea of Neumann was this, this separation of software and hardware. Uh, that the software is located in a memory. Uh, I show you how this uh, von Neumann machine looking like. Yeah? Okay, so basically the main part of a von Neumann machine is a so-called arithmetic logic unit. Yeah? ALU. Arithmetic logic unit. Yeah? This ALU has access to a thing called memory. Here's the memory. Here's a breadcrumb. Here's the memory. Okay. And like in the first video, I saw, I thought, I said somebody needs to tell the arithmetic logic unit what to do. So there's a control unit. These are the three integrational parts. Yeah? And I mean, it would work, but somehow I need to get data into the memory and I need to get results out of it. Yeah? So there are also uh, output, output I.O. units. Yeah? There's an output unit. However, this looks like, and there is an input unit. However, this looks like. So these are the parts how a von Neumann architecture looks like. And now we have to look how they are, how they are uh, communicating to each other, how they are interacting. Okay? There is a so-called bus system. Yeah? The bus system can transfer data yeah? from the memory to an arithmet arithmetic logic unit. Yeah. Of course, it can also transfer data from the memory to the output and from the memory to the control unit. Okay, and there is also a bus which can go 
from the input unit and also to the arithmetic logic unit there is also a side way. Yeah. These things here, this is the so-called data bus. Yeah. So this is the data bus. Here data can be exchanged. Yeah. Then there is the so-called control bus. Yeah. The control bus, which color? Yeah. It's much smaller but not that broad. Yeah. Communicating input with output, yeah. communicating the arithmetic logic unit with the control unit, and also the control unit with the output unit. Okay. This is the control bus. And then there is the, the address bus. Somehow I need to tell where to write and so on. Yeah. This color. There's here a connection. Also down to the control unit. And also here, the output. It's the address bus. So, you see, they can communicate to each other yeah, with different bus systems. How, how is this working now? How is this uh, Van Neumann machine now operating step by step? And that's the big benefit of the Van Neumann machine, that it is operating step by step. By the way, this thing here, which color do I use? This, this control unit. And the arithmetic logic unit, those two things together, they are often called central processing unit, CPU, uh, central processing unit. Usually it's one part in our computer, a CPU. Uh, CPU. Good. How is this, how is this working? First thing which is happening, uh, the so-called fetch. Uh, fetch means an instruction will be transferred from the memory to the control unit. Yeah. First, fetch. Fetched instruction. There's an instruction point inside the control unit. It knows what is the next to execute instruction. The address of it, getting the data from the memory, the instruction data from the memory to the control unit. Okay. Then the control unit will increase this uh, command pointer by one. So it is pointing to the next instruction. Okay? Because this is the instruction was already loaded and it's pointing to the next instruction. The second thing which is happening is the so-called decode. The control unit is decoding the command. Yeah. How is it decoding? It needs to understand the command and needs to tell the arithmetic logic unit what to do. Okay? Are numbers to summarize, are numbers to compare? Should we just go to another to another command? Something like this. It is decoded. Yeah. If the decode uh, needs to have some additional operands, yeah? these operands will be loaded. Yeah? So, third, I was looking for what color to do next. Yeah? Third,
operand fetch. The operand will be transferred to the ALU. Now the ALU knows what to do and it gets from the control unit what to do, it gets the operands which are necessary or not and can do its calculation. So the next thing which is happening is the execution. Execute. Arrow is executing, then there is a result out of this execution, and the last step is the so-called writeback. Okay. Use this color. Writeback. So the information is going back to the memory. Okay. This is how this is working. Fetch a command, decode the command, if necessary, load the operands, execute the command, and write the result back. Actually, this is exactly how this is working. The big benefit of this is that it's in order. That you can guarantee that one thing after the other is happening. If we write back, we start again fetching the next command. Yeah? If the command was go to another command, then we go to another command and execute this. We just have to change the command pointer here in the control unit. Okay? So it is easy for the software developer to guarantee some deterministic behavior yeah? because there is one ALO processing one data, one after the other. Single instruction, single data. Okay. This means race conditions cannot happen. What are race conditions? One possible race condition is: imagine there is some some data in the in the memory, yeah, and I have two processes, two calculating units, which should add one to this data. Let's say it's one, and and both have the command to add one to this. Yeah? Based on the timing of both, yeah, it might happen that they fetch the data yeah, and both are fetching one because they do it at the separate, at the exact same or almost the same time. Yeah, both fetching one, one, both adding one and write back and the result is two. Okay? Both have done the same. With a little different timing, one has already executed, yeah? and the other one is not fetching one; is already fetching two. Writing back, the result is three. It's just depending on timing. That's not deterministic. Yeah? These are very nasty software errors to find timing issues. Yeah? This cannot happen yeah? at a von Neumann machine. Uh, because it's sequence. Uh, what is also beneficial of the von Neumann machine is that the memory can hold uh, instructions and data. Same memory uh, can hold instructions and data. This means with my program I can change my program. Okay, I can simply change my program and this is working. Yeah? I can alter my program with my program. Yeah? This is beneficial. Yeah? Uh, I only need to memorize one location. What is the next instruction to do? Yeah? And if I having less memory for program, I can use more memory for data and vice versa. So this is the this is uh, the working principle. Yeah. The big disadvantage, the big disadvantage of these things is the is the data bus. That you know, you have to transfer commands and data over the same bus system, okay. the data bus system. This means it takes time. If I have, if 
the memory is only holding the data, the bus, the bus system is exclusively, exclusively for the data. Yeah? If the commands are located somewhere else, I can, I do not have to share the bus system. Yeah? That's the so-called von Neumann bottleneck. So this is the big disadvantage of the von Neumann architecture. This bottleneck was, was introduced by John Bacchus in 1977 in a speech he gave. Yeah, that's the von Neumann architecture. Like I said, most of our computers are based on this von Neumann architecture. They tend to paralyze things due to pipelining. So not, this is not executed uh, in order, yeah. the steps will be done in different so-called pipelines. Yeah. So one one command is fetched, yeah. then it will be decoded, and in the next pipeline already the next command is fetched. Yeah. When the first command is decoded, if the first if the first command has operand fetch, the second command is in is in decode. And the third command is already in fetch. So to try to paralyze thing, to paralyze things. Yeah? And in worst case, if it turns out that we have to jump, then I have to flush the, the pipelines yeah? and start over. Yeah? If we don't have to jump, it will get beneficial. So this is one possible way of speeding up those. And this is used, of course. This is used. Yeah? And Next time, we are also talking about another possible uh, architecture, the Harvard architecture. I already mentioned something about this. Uh, Harvard architecture, this has its own benefits. Yeah? And modern computers, if there are two sides of benefits, they try to combine those things. Yeah? So, that's it for the for Neumann architecture. Next time, Harvard architecture. For this time. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.